Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I know I've been away for a little bit and you can see my videos on why I've actually been out of the country visiting my loved one and things have been kind of going a little bit crazy but there is a reason I was away other than the obvious. We have uh, been working on a nonprofit corporation called We Got This. And uh, I want to tell you all about it, but I actually have my partner that also wants to tell you all about it. So you got a treat of both of us today. So before we get into that, make sure you click on that subscribe button, hit thumbs up because this video is going to be really important. Now let's go. I played in innocence, a feel of discontent. I'm finally facing it all, fearless. Okay, so today I have I have an idea of a new venture that I wanted to introduce to everybody. Now, when we're little, we used to have these books that were called the adventure books. So you start from the beginning and you choose your own adventure and based on what you choose, you end up in different endings, different kind of um, roads, etc. So I definitely know that anybody that wants to support this company, this organization is going to love the adventure they're in because the possibilities are endless. But without me explaining it, I'm going to let the CEO of this company explain what it is. Now, the organization is called We Got This. And here is the founder and the CEO that's going to tell us exactly what it's about. Good morning. How are you? Well, my name is Mr. Joseph. Um, I'm calling to talk to you today uh, to tell you a little bit about our organization that I have started called We Got This. Basically, we're an organization that is, you know, committed to providing services to the communities of Oregon and eventually, hopefully, you know, throughout the United States and possibly out the country um, if all goes well. One of the things that we focus in on is there's a big need in this state particularly for families to come see their loved ones or kids to go see their mothers or their fathers or, you know, relatives in a whole. So, you know, one of the endeavors I want to take is to get a bus and do a shuttle service where for a very small fee, you know, that goes into the nonprofits that can keep functioning, we bring families throughout the whole Oregon State to different prisons. We bring them up there. We plan to have some kind of services as far as like food on board of the bus. The bus will have televisions, uh, playstations for kids to play with, changing station for children, you know, that might be infants. Uh, bathroom will be in there. You know, there'll be some kind of food vending machines and things of that nature. It'll be AC, heated in the winter. You know, we'll have all the proper stuff to get your family safe to and from, you know, the visiting and, and back home. And that's one of the services we want to provide. Now, another would be uh, some kind of like, sort of, I guess you could call it a food pantry. For me personally, I go back to, you know, the, the 70s and stuff like that when uh, they had the Black Panther. They used to do a food breakfast thing for kids that were, you know, relatively poor in the neighborhoods and stuff like that, with, you know, single mother homes and things like that, where they couldn't really get by. And I took from that and decided to create another food program similar to the, what they were doing back then. And I want to try to create things where, you know, we're feeding kids in the morning, you know, something in the afternoon, and then at dinner time, you know, so that these kids are not going hungry. I also want to try to eventually extend it out to adults, you know, as well, because it's not just kids that go hungry, especially in the state of Oregon, there's a large community that's homeless and, uh, you know, struggling. So, uh, you know, I would like to do something in that nature. We're planning on, you know, soliciting from any company that like Dunkin' Donuts or Voodoo Donuts and places like that, you know, that have that are restaurants because by law, there's you can only have the food out for show for so long before they have to take it down and just most companies throw it away. So what I want to do is enter in some kind of agreement with them where we get this food and 
we basically give it free to the community, to people through our services, where they can come to somewhere, you know, it's nice and warm in the winter or, you know, nice and cool in the summer, and they can sit down, whether it's solo or with their family, and, you know, have a good meal and be fed. Okay. Now the name, I know everybody's going to be asking that. And I know you had a different name planned for it, which we'll get into in a second. So the current name, we got this. Where did you get that idea from? Well, that idea came from my beautiful, you know, fiance. And, you know, I was going through struggles in the Department of Corrections because I myself have fell on hard times and been incarcerated due to, you know, mental illnesses and a lot of things that I couldn't control as a kid. But while I've been in the system, you know, I've always, I learned how to do law while I was in here. And so when I was in the state of Connecticut, when I came and I started learning how to arm myself with civil law so that my rights could be upheld because they weren't being upheld. So when I came to Oregon as an interstate compact, there's a lot of travesties that go on in this state. And, uh, you know, I started trying to advocate through a group called Yuhuru Salsa Culture Club. And uh, I started going through them and I became the legal coordinator there and I began to systematically, you know, try to uphold some of the black prisoners' rights particularly and also reached out to Latins and some whites and the administration decided that as punishment for me helping, they were going to trample my rights, place me in SAG, and you know, ship me off to a lockdown facility. And through the course of this, you know, my beautiful fiance was subject to the suffering of all of this. So in the course of everything that we started going through, and it just became one of our models that you know, baby, we got this. You know, to uplift each other and, you know, let each other know that, you know, we're there for each other. And because of that, it grew on me, you know, that mm, I like that. We got this, you know, because it stands for everything. You know, you can say that in anything in life, you know, when you're down and out, we got this. You know, pick yourself up, you know, you need help, we got this. You know, anything like that. So it became one of those things. Okay. What was the original name you had? The original name... I had, which I formed in 2003, was Justice Now, which was an acronym, which meant Juvenile Understanding Saves Troubled Inner City Ethics, and then the now stood for Never Oppress Wisdom. I initially named it that because my focus was more on juveniles at that time, because as I was in prison, fighting for my life, literally, I watching what was around me and I seen that there was just so many young guys you know of all races sitting in the prison system and listening to their stories and how they started out in the life of crime or whatever most of it came from poverty you know single mother homes where the mother was never there because she had to work to take care of and she never had enough money so they always felt like they needed to do something to help out their mothers or whatever the, you know the reasoning was and I started to understand that if you don't catch them when they're juveniles to try to save them, they're going to be lost to the system. And trying to rehabilitate them when they're a lot older becomes a lot harder because a lot of the ways that they think are set in stone for a lot of guys. And unless you go through a lot of adversity, a lot of people don't change. And, you know, that's what made me want to start that because I wanted to help the kids. I wanted to stop the cynicism. I wanted to stop them from becoming a victim of the system, you know, and becoming actually a productive part of their societies and help their communities in a different way. And that was, you know, why I started that name at first. Okay. So do you think as a kid just entering the system, that would have made a difference for you? Absolutely. Absolutely would have made a difference because you're taught when you're from the streets and stuff like that or messed up homes, you know, that a lot of times the police and all of them, you know, the court system and everybody else is your enemy. So, you know, you, you resent anything with authority in reference to the law and things of that nature. And had I not had that kind of mentality when I went into the system, you know, I could have benefited 
did it a lot more than what I did, you know, to change my, my, my lifestyle and, and circumstances. But because I had this mentality, that's what it comes down to, of a street person and what I believe were the right morals and principles, because this is what was taught to me in my community. I lived on that. I would die on that. And a lot of these kids today are the same way because they don't see any other way out. Because nobody's coming to their house to pay the water bill, to pay the hot, hot, you know, the heat bill. And they're not putting food on their table. They're not putting clothes on their back. They're not doing the things that they're struggling with. And so when they see guys that are out there selling drugs or robbing people or pimping women, to them, that is their only way out. It used to be a basketball or a football was the way to get out. Nowadays, these are the things that the children are looking at. And when you have older guys that are just as lost, you know, and ignorant to, to things around them, they teach these kids these morals and values, like this is what they're supposed to do. And so they grow up thinking that that's the right thing to do. And that's where we lose them. It's the mentality that goes into it. You lose them at a young age. Okay. So what do you need for this organization to succeed? I actually need our people, you know, the community in a whole, white, black, Latin, Asian, you know, everybody. You know, I need a community. You know, it goes back to that old saying, it takes a a village to raise a child. So basically what we need to do is just have people come out and help, you know, volunteer. You know, we will have some select position that we can actually hire people for certain things and they can get paid for. But we need people to donate, you know, certain things that we, the services that we provide. Because like I said, eventually, you know, we want to get into a lot more than just the busing and the food programs. You know, we want to get into actual mental health care, you know, actually some kind of uh, actual physical health care, you know, having some kind of clinic, you know, with people, whether they're volunteers or, you know, stuff like that. You know, we just need people that are willing to want to get back and change their community because we can no longer just sit back and, and, and want the authority or the government to help your communities. Yes, they do to a certain degree, but it starts with us. Okay, we well, have to be the one. Uh, well, I'm going to have the information on the screen and in the Dropbox for everybody anyhow, but... If I wasn't involved in the organization and I'm just tuning into this now, what do you think I should do? What could I do? I would say, you know, go to the to the website or Facebook, let's get a little information. Uh, we should be having it up running, you know, shortly, every, you know, all the stuff. And I would say, you know, go to the box that says, you know, you would like to volunteer or, you know, you got special skills in certain areas and let us know. Just drop us some kind of email or something about yourself and, you know, that you're interested in helping or you want to donate and, or whatever it is, you know, just reach out to us and, you know, we can reach out to you and then we can go from there and see what where we can put you best at use to help your communities. Because like I said, this is not just about, you know, one community. I want to reach all communities. I think there's problems in every single community that there is underneath every race. Some people hide it better you know, because of personal pride and other things, and I respect that. However, I want to re-educate the people. You know, I want to let them know it's okay to have problems and need help. So, you know, I think if you know anybody that needs help, maybe talk to them and tell them to reach out to our organization. You know, we privacy in certain areas, we definitely uphold to the highest standard because everybody that I want involved with my organization, I want them to truly feel that what they're doing you know, it's pivotal in Paramount and, you know, and making a difference in other people's lives, their life, and our community at large. Okay. Well, most people don't know you as well as I do. So a simple question is, why you? Uh, you know, I ask myself that many mm-hmm. times too. And the truth is, I just, you know, I've been through a lot in my lifetime, you know. I've been through abuses, you know, as a child, I've been through a lot of things. And, you know, at this stage of my life, you know, I'm almost close to 50 now. And I'm tired, you know, I'm tired of seeing the things that's going on. I'm tired of going through the things that I go through. And I felt like, you know, no one else is doing anything, you know, and you 
can't complain about something if you're not going to stand up to try to fix it. So I figured, you know, I educated myself, you know, and why not? If not me, who? That's a good answer. So as much as I have many, many questions, I'm going to leave people with just, you know, enough to wonder about for next time. So before I close this, is there anything you'd like to add? One thing I would like to add is that, uh, you know, I really truly hope that people take this serious. And I know from some of the stuff we've already done, there's a lot of organizations that have and have offered to partner up with us and donate and stuff like that. And, you know, we are going to do those things. And I just hope that people, you know, they feel the same way I do. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired and know that there's a change that needs to be had. And they're willing to put the boots to the ground and get in the trenches with me and everybody else and let's change our communities. Okay, that sounds like a good way to wrap it up. I'm going to close here. Thank you very much. You're welcome, my dear. <laughs>Well, that is a little bit of the info on We Got This. There's so much more to come, but we're in the beginning stages. So stay tuned and keep coming back. Bye.